On April 8th, 2013, former British Prime Minister Margaret Thatcher would pass away. She was a polarizing figure in leading Britain through the 80s during the backdrop of the Cold War, economic recession, and conflict in Northern Ireland. A week later, the nation mourned her, but it wasn't the first time Margaret Thatcher had died, at least metaphorically. That's what we're going to explore in today's video. Back in 1980, Iron Maiden was an up-and-coming band led by frontman Paul Diano. The band put out their second single on May 16th of 1980 called Sanctuary. The artwork for the single depicted the band's mascot, Eddie, standing over the slain body of the former British Prime Minister, Margaret Thatcher. Thatcher was frequently referred to as the Iron Lady, a name a Soviet journalist penned for her to describe her uncompromising and strong-willed style. A few other publications I've come across claim that she was referred to as Iron Maiden, but personally, I've never heard that in reference to her, it's always been Iron Lady. Iron Maiden's song Sanctuary first appeared on the Metal for Mothers compilation, but it would be re-released on the band's debut record which was self-titled, and it would also be put out as a single. The version of the song that was released as a single for their self-titled debut record was an improved recording over what appeared on the compilation record. The single would end up peaking at number 29 on the UK charts, and the song also gave Iron Maiden their first taste of controversy, even if it was all planned from the beginning. In author Mick Wall's book Run to the Hills, Iron Maiden, the authorized biography, he would write, A knife-wielding Eddie is depicted crouching over the slain, mini-skirted figure of a woman that on close inspection appears to be Margaret Thatcher, the conservative prime minister who had been swept into power in Britain at the 1979 general election. Judging by the scene, Eddie has apparently caught the malingering Prime Minister in the unforgivable act of tearing down an Iron Maiden poster from a street wall, a crime in Eddie's mad, unblinking eyes worthy of only one punishment, he would write. The band's manager Rod Smallwood suggested to the group's label that they should place a black bar over Thatcher's face to claim that the sleeve was censored. Smallwood believed that this would give the tabloids an angle and draw attention to the single, and it worked exactly how the band imagined. The single's release coincidentally enough happened at a time when several prominent conservative politicians were attacked by disgruntled members of the public. On May 20th of 1980, the Daily Mirror would publish the uncensored artwork from the single with the headline, It's Murder, Maggie Gets Rock Mugging. The controversy also made its way into the British Parliament, and the Daily Mirror hilariously quoted a ministerial spokesman as saying, this is not the way we'd like her portrayed, I'm sure she would not like it, they would say. The publication would call the cover, and I quote, horrific, and interview several young Tories who shared similar sentiments. The band's manager, Rod Smallwood, would admit that the art was tongue-in-cheek, but the former British Prime Minister would get her revenge. The band's label, Zomba Music, suggested the group's next single should be a cover of the Skyhook's Women in Uniform. The single's artwork showed Eddie with a girl on each arm, and waiting around the corner appeared to be Margaret Thatcher holding a gun. The group's cover of Women in Uniform was released the same year on October 27th. This cover also caused some controversy, but not because of the Prime Minister, but because Eddie was walking down the street with a nurse and a schoolgirl on his arms, as according to the Liverpool Daily Post, a group of screaming, chanting, banner-carrying feminists would demonstrate against Iron Maiden during a show at Leeds University on the 22nd of November in 1980. In May of 2001, during an interview with artist Derek Riggs, who invented the band's mascot, Eddie, he was asked if he had taken any flack from the media about the single cover, saying the flack for that single was invented by the band's management. They banned it and they put the black square over her face and then they showed it to the press and cried censorship. But there really wasn't any. The flack was all imaginary and self-generated for publicity. It's an old trick and it nearly always sells records. Go and ask all the rappers who swear on their records all the time. If it depressed record sales, they would stop doing it. It's been claimed that the hands shown on Iron Maiden's 1981 album Killers that are clutching at Eddie's t-shirt is that of Margaret Thatcher. That does it for today's video, guys. Thanks for watching. Be sure to like button and subscribe. I'll see you again on Rock and Roll Your Stories. Take care.